morning, everyone. This is Jakob Sop. Uh, I work at Swedish National Data Service, which is in Swedish as a new Svensk National Data Service. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the benefits of participating in an EU project and what we gained from participating. So a little bit first about SND. It's a national infrastructure for making research data accessible, reusable and uh, stored for the future. It's a consortium since January 1st, 2018, a consortium of seven universities. Uh, we are situated in Gothenburg, the main office. We're financed by the Research Council and the consortium members. We have more than 30 years experience of disseminating and taking care of research data mainly because we originate in the social science service organization. Uh, the consortium, as you can see, is spread out over the country. And the members in the consortium, the other ones, they don't contribute in money, but they contribute in service, in knowledge, in staff. So if a researcher in Sweden needs to know something specific that they can help them with, they contact the specialist at those universities instead of s and &E in Gothenburg. So what do we do? Yeah, we support access to research data through education, assistance, technical features. Uh, we are at the moment building a distributed uniform system to make the data fair, where e each and every university in Sweden shall upload the data and make it accessible through SD's web portal. And we have a network of institutes uh, all over the country, and at the moment I think there are 30 universities and research institutes participating in the network. And they have signed up on creating a data access unit, what we call it, with staff who's going to help the researchers preparing the data for dissemination, data management plans, file formats, documentation, basically doing it fair. <coughs> so, uh, Ariadne, uh, before Ariadne, um, archaeology, at s and until 2011, there were no archaeologists uh, but me, but we had no knowledge about the structure, what kind of metadata, documentation, anything. It didn't exist. It was just social science data, square, rectangular data, SPSS, SAS, uh, stata files, nothing else based on surveys mostly, social science surveys. So what we had to do was to adapt the internal management system that was built for social science. We needed to look into new types of software that we could use. And we had to realize that there were new types of material that we had to take care of, not just question-based surveys. So I look into the, how the material was documented, uh, what kind of information from the files could we actually extract and reuse into our management system, and what could we use into our web catalogs, and how much did we have to do it manually typing all the information into the management system. So, major changes that we had to do. We had to adopt our management systems to coordinates. And I have to tell you that being an archaeologist, it's coordinates, it's yeah, everywhere for their archaeological data, but for social sciences. Most of my colleagues are said, what, why, what can you do with that? Is it useful? Is it really necessary? You want to use coordinates for being able to search a map? Why? 
and uh, it was quite frustrating, I have to say. And we also had to add, uh, with the coordinates comes bounding boxes and polygons, time periods, different sorts of new types of keywords. And I also asked my colleagues in the IT section to make the data directly downloadable without freely available, without registration, without ordering the data, just click and download it. And that was completely new for them. So, becoming a member of Ariadne. Uh, well, started in February 2013, as Julian said before, ended four years later. Uh, S&D was a technical partner. We were building, one of them, building the portal. We were contract provided with GIS data. Uh, we participated in six out of 17 work packages and we made adaptations of the data, GIS data mostly, that had at SD to what metadata we had to upload later on into the, yeah, the portal. So we've got some new ideas, new solutions. Uh, by contributing to the development of Ariadne, we learned new things. Got new ideas, new technologies, both for the organization, how we should change things in our management system, but also uh, in our search portal. And one of these things that we brought from Ariane was the Elastic Search. Uh, it's a search en engine based on Lucene library. I'm not a programmer, I have no idea what it is. Anyway, I know it's a fast search system. It's a multi-tenant capable full text search engine, which I understood it searched in everything that you have on your uh, system, more or less. And it's a schema-free JSON documents and it's developed in Java. It works fairly well for us anyway. So we got a map search from the beginning uh, in our metadata system at SMD, we extracted the coordinates for uh, the polygons in the surveys into our management system, but we couldn't show it on maps. So the IT section said, well, you have to have a bounding box. All the data we had was squares, big squares, which is not very, very useful if you want to look into what it is. So we transferred the, develop, uh, the map search system we had in Ariadne. And now at SND we can actually use, we have market view, so we can pinpoint more centralized where the findings are, or we have the polygon view, which the data for the polygons we extract out from the shape files, put it into our management system and then on the map search system. And uh, with mouse over, uh, you can actually get some information about the surveys, metadata, and a link to find even more information about uh, the specific survey. Which leads to a catalog post where you find information about who did what, when, why, and uh, you can also download the data freely in shapefile formats, in GML file formats, together with an access database. And you can find the uh, metadata in different formats as well, if you want to. We had to... Uh, all the time periods that we used at s &D, we connected that to Periodo, which has been very useful for us, both from the point of view that we can actually map it towards Ariane and the data that's there, but also that we can share our uh, definitions of time periods to other researchers and organizations in Sweden if they want to use it but at least they can see, all right, you put these dates on these time periods. And time periods, I have to say, is difficult to talk about with people who start archeologists, especially if you talk about it with IT people. 
I've tried for years to explain to them that time, early time periods in archaeology doesn't start in a specific year and end in a specific year. It's a culture, and they can't grasp that. It's so difficult for them. Uh, <coughs> they start to understand it now after seven years nagging from me. Anyways, we also mapped all the keywords we had to AAT. And I think that's very useful for archaeologists in Sweden and abroad because you can search in your own language and you've got a connection to other languages, other data, so you can actually find more data in other countries. And I think that's really, really good. It's not always an exact match, but a similar, almost same as, and so on. So, the impact, uh, we got a new portal, search and, uh, engine, based on the same techniques as Ariane. It was fully operational in 2017 with Elasticsearch, map search, time periods, quite a lot of other things that we managed to incorporate in our systems. Uh, the search system is better adapted to archaeological data as well. Uh, to the scope, types, presentation of the data, presentation of, uh, to archaeologists, so they are, can feel a little bit more familiar with their environment in the catalogue. And increased usefulness in our catalogue hopefully also ends up in increased uh, deposition of data to make it more available for others. If researchers recognise themselves in the system, it's easier to use it again. And as I mentioned before, we also worked on the vocabularies used that we used at SD. We mapped it to AAT uh, and Periodo and a couple of other things. Uh, before I say thank you, there's another thing that I not, don't have in a slide, but I think it's quite important anyway. Uh, I was the first archaeologist at SD for many, many years. And I had to struggle against the social science based organization. <laughs> Suddenly, being part of, and quite often, I said, I need this for the archaeological data, we need this, you have to make these changes, and people just <coughs> said, why? It's not familiar, it's strange. <coughs> it was off with the weird data. Suddenly, I got Ariadne behind me saying that we need this. So sometimes being a part of an EU project can actually help the development of an organization because you have another organization behind you pushing forward what needs to be changed in an organization. And with that, I'd like to say thank you.